Today we're going to talk about the relationship between horizontal curves and cross slopes. So we're going to do two things. We're going to use this, this two-dimensional drawing uh, to relate what's happening throughout the transition from a tangent to a curve. And then we're also going to use some more three-dimensional objects to represent what's, what's going on and what's happening um, with the curve. So this is a very common drawing, and so I'm going to point out a few things with this before we uh, go further. The most important thing is our frame of reference, which is the center line shown as the solid black line here going uh, from left to right across the screen. And so for this example, we're going to uh, assume that the center line has no grade. In all likelihood, there will be some grade, either positive or negative. Uh, but for this, we'll assume it's, it's zero grade. Uh, then we're also going to see how the edge of pavement relates to that center line both the inside and outside edge of pavement. So we see uh, the, the line that's below the center line at this point represents the inside edge of pavement and the line on top represents the outside edge of pavement. So as we start from point A, as we're approaching the curve, we're going to be in a tangent section and our cross slope will have a normal crown section. And the same thing as we leave the curve, will return back to a normal crown, the rooftop slope of a 2% grade on each side of the center line. So A and H have the same cross section or we're at, at normal crown. So our super elevation is at normal crown. So now if we look um, at our three dimensional object, so here we have laid out tangent. So we have a, a back tangent and a forward tangent. So as we come along the tangent, We'll have normal crown for some distance as it uh, continues along. So our normal crown will continue as far as the tangent goes on both sides of, of this tangent, on both, both directions of the curve. So again, normal crown, 2% falling away from the center line of the roadway. So we have that normal crown extending uh, in both directions, radiating outward from the curve. At the point where we leave normal crown, we're going to start rotating the outside edge of pavement. So the outside edge of pavement is going to start rotating upward towards the elevation of the center line. Uh, eventually we'll reach point B or point G from the other side. But we're going to start with that transition and again we'll start, uh, we'll transition from normal crown. So at this point we'll be at 2% still on the inside edge of pavement and we're rotating upward so at this point we're at at 1% on the outside edge of pavement. So on each, each side of the curve, uh, coming into the curve, we're rotating towards up towards the center line. On the other side of the curve, as we're leaving the curve, we're rotating back towards normal crown. As we continue that rotation, we're going to reach adverse crown removed, which is point B and also point G. This is where the inside edge of pavement still is at 2% normal crown. The outside edge of pavement is at 0%. So the outside edge of pavement at adverse crown removed is at the same elevation of the center line. At this point, we continue with the rotation. Adverse crown removed is just an instantaneous point, so we're continuing to rotate the outside edge of pavement upward. Uh, at this point, we're at 2% on the inside edge of pavement and 1% on the outside. So again, the inside edge of pavement hasn't rotated at all yet. The outside edge of pavement continues to rotate upwards. So just again, another incremental step along our curve. And then we'll reach reverse crown, which is 2% on in both sides of the road. So this is point C coming into the curve, and then F going out of the curve as shown in this drawing. So again, this is our reverse crown. Our entire roadway is sloped at 2%. So if we see from our drawing, at this point, the inside edge of pavement is the same elevation beneath 
the center line or below the center line in elevation as the outside edge of pavement is above the center line. So the center line is split in the middle uh, and then at 2% and across the lane widths, uh, the inside edge will be below and the outside edge will be above. At this point, the entire pavement will rotate, assuming we're rotating about the center line. So our slopes at this point will match each other as we continue to rotate more and more until we reach full design super elevation. So we continue to ro rotate. So at this point, both sides of the center line are at 3%. Our entire roadway is at 3%. And again, continuing to rotate, now we're at, at 4% on each side of the center line. And for this example, we're going to use a design super elevation at 5%. So after 4%, then we'll reach our full design super elevation of 5%. And at this point, we've reached... the center of the, of the curve, and this will be points D and E. So between D and E, this is the, the simple part of the curve, uh, the constant arc. And again, we've made that larger transition from normal crown leading into the curve. We've slowly rotated up the outside edge of pavement. We came to adverse crown remove where the outside edge of pavement is flush with the center line. We continue rotating up until we reach reverse crown, where the entire roadway is sloped at 2%. And then at that point, the entire roadway slopes uh, together until we reach design super elevation. We hold steady at design super elevation until we reach the end of our simple curve. And then we're going to rotate back out of design super elevation and hit the same points, reverse crown adverse crown removed and back to normal crown and make that full transition. Again, the purpose of horizontal curve is to make that overall transition from tangent to tangent and make that transition smoothly. And the, her the curve is going to help us make that transition and maintain equilibrium with the vehicle as we make the transition along the radius um, and balance those forces of the vehicle. So there are a couple of ways to accomplish this. One is with a spiral curve. And so that's what these set of four points represent, the TS, SC, CS, and ST. So the TS is the tangent to spiral point. So if we're coming along the tangent at the point where we reach adverse crown removed, this will represent our TS point. So at this point, we begin our spiral transition length. That spiral transition length will take us until we begin our design, design super elevation. So that's the length of spiral between our TS and SC. TS stands for tangent to spiral, and SC stands for spiral to curve. So it's the transition between those two elements. Again, this section will be our spiral. The middle part where it design super elevation will be our curve. Then we'll have another spiral on the back end between design super elevation and adverse crown remove. Removed, and then on each side of adverse crown removed, we have the tangent. So those are our, our points T, S, and C. Tangent, spiral, and curve. So again, T, S leading in, then S, C, C, S, and S, T. Those are our points on our spiral curve. So that's how the layout is works for a spiral curve. Now what happens even if you have a simple curve, so if you just have a, a PC and a PT with a simple curve, you still need to accomplish the rotation of the center line to allow for that transition from normal crown to design super elevation. One alternative to make that happen is to split the runoff, which is the length of, length of spiral, the distance between the TS and the SC. So that super elevation runoff still needs to be accomplished even if we have just a simple curve. And what we can do is distribute it two-thirds of the runoff before the PC and one-third after the PC. And that's a common method or somewhere um, in the, the ballpark of using the two-thirds and one-third. So that, that completes this discussion about the relationship between cross slopes and horizontal curvature.
Thank you for your time.